This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Welcome to Loving Animals. I'm your host, Dr. Robin Ganser, and I'm so excited you've joined us this week because we have an amazing episode to share with you today. Actress, speaker, and best-selling author Barbara Niven is here discussing her passion for protecting the world's animals and her advocacy against the cruelties of the horrific dog meat trade. Barbara has been one of our most devoted supporters for years, and beyond her actionable work on behalf of animals, she also has one of the kindest, most beautiful hearts of anyone I've ever known. Don't go away now, because coming up next, we'll hear from the beautiful, inspirational Barbara Niven on this week's episode of Loving Animals. We'll be right back. When Helen Brown ran away to New York City five years ago, she had no idea that a homeless cat with a punk rock haircut and enough catitude to light up the Empire State Building would be the one to teach her the true meaning of love and a forever home. In the tradition of her internationally best-selling memoir, Cleo, Helen Brown's Bono, the amazing story of a rescue cat who inspired a community, is a heartwarming true story about a woman without an anchor, a homeless cat without much hope, and finding a forever home in the city that never sleeps. Modern Cat Magazine calls Bono an uplifting tale about how everyone deserves love and a second chance. Bono by Helen Brown is on sale now everywhere. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com Well, welcome to Loving Animals this week. I'm so thrilled to welcome our wonderful friend, a personal inspiration to me, beautiful actress, someone who actually practices, I know it's called Star Power Affirmations, which are beautiful, and most importantly to all of our listeners, she loves animals as much as we do. Please join me in welcoming Barbara Niven. Barbara, thank you for being here. Oh, thank you for asking me. Anybody who loves animals is a friend of mine because we are already connected, aren't we? We absolutely are. And Barbara, I know that today's busy for you. You're in Vancouver. You're uh, filming for three and a half months the series Chesapeake Shores, which we're so excited about. So, uh, <laughs> and we love we love what you do on Hallmark, and we we've loved following you. I love. Oh my goodness, it goes back to the great show with Andy McDowell too. That was wonderful. Um, oh, well, thank you so yeah. much for watching. Seriously, I feel so blessed to be able to do what I love and get paid for it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like getting paid to play pretend. It was my dream from a long time ago, and so I could not do it if we didn't have people who watch and, and bring it full circle back. So it's such a blessing and a gift to be able to do this. And I just want to say thank you for anybody who watches. And Chesapeake Shores is really special because we are now in our second season. Uh, We shoot on Vancouver Island, which is uh, another plane ride, either in a propeller plane or on a ferry to go over to Vancouver Island. But the, the scenery here is magnificent. It's almost like it's God's country. You're just reminded so much every day of God's magnificence. And in the scenery and in the energy outside, and every day I take a walk on the beach and just sit and and meditate and just reflect and just feel the energy. And I'm so grateful to be able to align with you, Robin, and with your causes as well with American Humane and all you do for animals, because putting all the positive energy that we can find into making a difference for those who have no voice is just such a thrill and such a, a duty for and an honor for all of us to do. And the people that you can reach with your show now and the people who are listening, just thank you for supporting animals and for, for loving them and doing everything we can to make their lives better. Oh, Barbara, that's so beautiful. And, you know, I just am so fascinated. Your career is is just amazing. I love your work. I love that you rescue and use your platform for conversations about animals, not just in the United States, but animals around the world and how they're impacted. Mm -hmm. But one thing that I want to read is one of your star power 
affirmations. And I want you to share with our listeners what this is. This is one of my favorite quotes of all time from Barbara Niven. It's never too late to become who and what you always were meant to be. All that has come before will lead you exactly to your future self. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. What a truth that is for me. And I find that it resonates with most people, especially as as one gets older. You find that all those things that you've been through are lessons and you kind of connect the dots eventually as to why they happened. You don't always know why at the time, but you kind of are shown the way eventually. And it's like a map to a destination and a journey. And as I, I've gotten older, like I'm in, I'm 64 now and proud mm-hmm. of it. And I know in my, in my profession, women especially don't like to share their age, but dang it, we have to stop that age discrimination that we impose on ourselves. Not that so much that everybody else does it, but we feel like we do, that we get belittled or we are not as much value as we get older, but we have so much more life and more lessons to share. And if you don't go through something, how can you ever teach the lesson and pay it forward from what you've just come through? And so as I get older, and you tell me if, I mean, you're way younger than I am, but you tell mm. me if you have these kind of whispers in your spirit as well to where that I feel like I am being led and being guided towards my purpose now, my life purpose. Mm-hmm. And the the older I get, the more I feel like I have been guided and in these things that I have, things that I'm meant to do, that everything has happened to me, all the lessons that I need to share and pay forward now. Is that happening to you too? Or Because I know you're purpose now and you do so much work for animals and and heading American Humane is such a a huge purpose and how did how did you even get started and how did how did you make that commitment and decide to take that leap Robin wow well you know Barbara that is I think what you've said is so so true I do hear you know daily I try to listen to what is my purpose and stay focused on that because this world can be so distracting it can be so yep. distracting we let so much you know come at us and uh, attack our spirit and our core and our and what is meant to be our purpose we can be often led down a different path and so mm-hmm. that's why I'm just uh, I'm in love with your quotes and your star power affirmations that's so I think so important if I'm going to be posting some of these Just in my personal space. So I will wake up every morning and repeat these because I think that's really what it's all about is repeating how did we get into what our life is meant to be. So I I ended up at American Humane after spending a a career in, in social good, in the, you know, the philanthropy space. But I felt that I was doing public policy, lots of different things, that a real calling was more hands on work and that I would feel that my purpose would be better served in life to be able to make a difference in the lives of creatures and creatures not just including our cats and dogs but all creatures i've known since i was a little girl uh watching those little disney movies and mutual of omaha wild kingdom that i (laughs) want i remember those and i wanted to make a difference for animals and i'm just so fortunate that uh, i was had this opportunity to lead american humane it is challenging every day because we'd see so much cruelty so much lack of awareness lack of resources to do the work that's needed that's a big challenge every day we know what the problems take in terms of resources to resolve and to make a difference in the lives of animals and that's challenging to secure the resources to do the job well that is all you know what we think about every day so i have to tell you from my perspective your affirmations are so important to me and i want to thank you for putting those out there Thank you. Well, the particular one that you that you read about is never too late to begin is really true because so often we feel like oh, if we didn't make a certain choice in at say at eighteen, where whether it's for career or love or something, it's never too late to change. I think it takes a lot of courage to change, and I call it just doing a course correction. It doesn't even have to be a major, you know, like move or anything, but. Sometimes it's just a, a few little little degrees on that dial, maybe veering just a, a little bit to the left or maybe a little bit to the right can make all the difference. Mm-hmm. And you're probably already being guided, but sometimes you just need to, and I do it, honestly, I do it consciously every New Year's. 
I sit and think, well, where have I gone this last year? What has happened? Mm-hmm. And what do I need to do now to, to look at the bigger picture, to maybe make a, incorporate just a few more little changes in here? And what you were saying, too, about there being such an overwhelming need for to help creatures, that's both, both the two-legged and the four-legged and the mm-hmm. ones that don't have any legs, mm-hmm. um, that it can be really overwhelming. And sometimes you get so overwhelmed and so depressed by the need and by the cruelty that we see and by the poor little creatures who have no voice and we want so much to be their voice, but all we can do is save them one animal at a time. Absolutely. And what I find is that by joining forces with others like you or I'm, I do other animal rescue groups or people-saving groups, I work with other organizations too, that sometimes we can be a leader and sometimes we need to just sit back and let other people lead and help recharge and refill our own little energy tank and heart tank because it can be too overwhelming for one person. Especially with those... Such a, yeah, with such a negative... There's so much negative energy right now, but I feel like we are awakening and we're coming together like you and I have and mm-hmm. like your listeners here mm-hmm. on uh, that will hear this show. We are being awakened for a purpose and we're being led together to come together because we can make much bigger of a difference together. And I need you, I need them, um, because sometimes that, that I can be the strong one and other times when I'm crying over seeing an email about dog meat festivals happening mm-hmm. in China, mm-hmm. you know, I need to be able to be filled up by all of you too. And mm-hmm. that's how we help each other. And we can, I do believe that the good energy and the good people and the good hearts will win in the end. But it just in the meantime, we have to hurry and do it as fast as we can. But all we can do is save one at a time. I think that's beautiful. One other one of your quotes that means a lot to me, particularly when I think about the cruelty and abuse we see in the animal world, uh, how humans treat animals. This is one that just resonates. What they did to me then does not define who I am today. I am hereby reclaim my power. And I thought that was beautiful. I hereby reclaim my power. And each of us have power to make a difference in the lives of animals, which is one reason I think we're called to uh, to do this work. We know that uh, we have to reclaim our power to do it. Barbara, we're going to have to go into a commercial break briefly, but I want to come back and talk about the Meat Festival in China and your advocacy oh. about eliminating one of the most horrific cruelties, I think, out there for our uh, precious canines. So we'll be back right after this brief message. You're listening to Loving Animals. This is your host, Robin Ganser. We'll be right back, right after these messages. Stay tuned. You know that feeling when you go to clean the litter box and it's a complete disaster? Yeah, we've got you covered. Introducing World's Best Cat Litter Zero Mess, the advanced litter that gives you two times better clumping and more odor control with less litter. Zero Mess combines the concentrated power of corn with super-absorbent plant fibers. Translation, scoop once and you're done. Find it at a pet store near you and save $2. Visit www.saveonworldsbest.com. Does your dog itch, scratch, stink, or shed like crazy? Come to Dynavite for help. Order a 90-day supply of Dynavite. Dynavite for life. Pick up two tubes of Doggo Suds. Get the third tube free. Peppermint, tea tree, lavender, Doggo Sud shampoo. Made with all-natural coconut, jojoba, aloe. Great for healthy skin and soft, shiny coats. But no itchy, harsh chemicals. Lather up, rinse away. Try Doggo Suds. Buy two, get one free. At Dynavite.com. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets on Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. <laughs> Welcome back to Loving Animals. This is your host, Robin Ganser. We're here with the inspirational Barbara Niven. And Barbara, I'm so glad that your life purpose involves loving animals. And so much Mm. so that you have been a significant advocate for making change, not just in our country, but indeed around the world. Talk to me a little bit about your feelings, your angst, your pain when you learned more about the Yulon Meat Festival in China. 
Well, and okay, so there's a Yulan meat festival in China, but it's not just the dog and cat meat trade in China. It's around the world. And there are videos out there that talks about that shows actually what's happening to these animals. So let me let me just say what it is first. In many mostly Asian countries, people feel that eating animals or and particularly for men eating the animal's penis makes them more virile. And you know, it's not just about animals here, but you know, it, we can go into so much more about like eating the rhino horns and all these different myths that happen because they, they feel like these animals give them magical powers. Mm-hmm. But specifically about the dog meat festival in Yulin, China, we've all kind of heard the words before, but it's easy to, to, not, to close your eyes and not think about it because it's so horrific. Mm-hmm. So I finally started watching one of the videos that I got in my email. And I will never get the sight out of my mind. I urge you probably maybe you can watch three seconds of one of these videos it will be implanted forever and you will never get the picture out of your mind because what they do they have these animals these beautiful dogs and cats that are often stolen they've been pets they are stolen because there's such a a need in these festivals at this time to take them out one by one and in front of the other dogs to kill them And before they kill them, they believe that their meat tastes better if they have been terrified first and tortured first. So they will do whatever they can to make the animal suffer the absolute most, including their main thing that they love to do is to skin these animals alive. You watch the video with them actually starting at the top of their of their neck pulling the skin Mm -hmm. off of these animals while they are screaming. And and it is so horrible, you cannot even believe it. And often in these videos, you see these men who are doing it, and I'm saying men, there are maybe women who do it too. I'm saying it, men as a collective human race, men are smiling because they're getting off on it. There are... Each one of the the Yulin Meat Festival happens in June. It's mm-hmm. coming up again, mm-hmm. June twenty ninth or somewhere the last week of June. And in Korea, and, right? Um, I mean, there's Korea. Yeah, yeah, it happens in Korea too. But the Yulin one we're focusing on right now because it's happening so quickly, and we're trying to put pressure on uh, at the Chinese embassies, etc. And in Korea, it happens as well. And there is a new South Korean leader that was just elected who is an animal lover. So he is said to be going to putting a stop on it, at least exerting pressures, because these are not just fun festivals. These are culture-driven because they're myths that Mm -hmm. the village and the people have passed down that, that by eating these animals and torturing them, they actually get their magical powers in their body. But of course, we know that that is not true. And they are eating such bad karma. And so anyway, we are I'm trying everything I can to raise awareness. And the thing that I find the most difficult, and which is what it didn't even sink into my soul that this could be happening for so long is Mm -hmm. when something is so horrible, we all close our eyes and turn away because we can't look at it. But we have to look at it and be crushed enough in our souls to pass it on and see the urgency. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm trying to do everything I can to raise awareness. You and I have talked about what American Humane is doing to help this cause as well. And thank you so much for doing it, because I know you just rescued many animals again from China, didn't you, from the dog meat trade? I did. Last fall, I was in Hong Kong, and we were able to be part of a rescue effort that involved uh, over 100 dogs, and uh, I think it was a dozen that we paid for, for full transport, full every every bit of uh, their relocation back to the the United States, and that was a a moment that really, um, it really shook me. It really um, made me feel like, again, that's our purpose, right? That's the purpose we started out in this conversation about how we can really make a difference. And I believe that bringing those dogs back is an opportunity for Americans to have a 
conversation because the dogs are here on our soil. We can look at them and see their creatures just like the own dogs in our own shelters here in our country and rescue groups they, in the country. They are just normal little They're dogs. normal dogs. They're, yes, they're not packs. They're no. not anything. And a mm-hmm. dog, even when I've heard that when they're rescued from a meat farm like this, mm-hmm. they still, when the rescuer comes up and they've never, ever had a kind hand to pet them, they're mm-hmm. often without food or water. They're raised in fear, yet when mm-hmm. they first find love, they wag their tail. Mm-hmm. Still, dogs have such hope. Yes, and they have I'm hope sorry. and they have faith in us humans. And uh, yeah. it is a, uh, it's all about love. And Barbara, I have to say that uh, I'm so touched by your willingness to use your incredible platform to help make the world better for helping us all be aware so that we can use our tools to uh, to drive change and use our platforms to drive change. We've worked with right. the World Dog Alliance. We're hoping that uh, through some international relationships that we'll be able to stop this horrific practice and importantly, stop the practice in South Korea before the Olympics. A lot yeah. of work for us to do for animals. And I think there's some great partnerships that we can build internationally to yeah. help and, drive and this and cultural also, change. Absolutely. And it's it's huge now that we use the the economic and, and the high level platform of the Olympics in South Korea at Pyongyang, isn't that where it is? Mm-hmm. I, I'm not sure if I pronounced that correctly. But we all need to put a pressure on. And I want to also say that each one of us can do something. Right. It's just like uh, working to save animals in an animal shelter or rescue efforts. Each one of us has a tool and a gift and a talent that we can use. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's starting a petition or adding your signature to a petition. Mm-hmm. Or and, and there are so many petitions out there now. All you have to do is Google dog meat trade, South Korea, Olympics, etc. And you will go to a site and all the action items are right there. If right. each one of us is listening, who is listening right now, would go and do that, call the, the South Korean consulate, call the, the Chinese embassy in your area. There are people who are already giving you the tools and, and mapping out the actions that you can take daily, because now is the time that we can come together and, and do something every single day to help end this and mm-hmm. help raise awareness. Mm-hmm. Um, I personally have been sharing this with on social media every day on my Twitter feed at, and my Twitter if you want to get in on this and start sharing too is at Barbara Niven and so many of my my friends that I've met now on social media are also paying it forward and doing that. Wonderful. Um, so just raise awareness where you are and then have the groups that you're creating just start taking action because I really feel like we are in the best time possible that we can help stop this. It's about educating us right. here and also educating the people in the countries because they don't know any better. I guess at these festivals, as they're doing this, people like there's probably in a four by four crate cage, wire cage, where the animals have no food and water. There are probably six huge dogs crammed in there, in there. Some Mm -hmm. are on the bottom where they can't breathe, etc. And then the humans that are at the festival, they're celebrating and they say, oh, I want that one with the tongue hanging out on the bottom. Yeah, it's horrible. Suffered the most. And their children are watching. So they come out, they watch the animal, they're all laughing as they're getting tortured and skinned alive. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes, and it's cats too, sometimes they're all thrown into boiling water alive because, and they watch them scream because they think it tastes better. These are things we need to know. We have to talk about that. That is not right. And and they're passing that down to the kids too because they're getting normalized. They're getting numbed to cruelty. And we have to end that. It's just that when we know better, we can do better. So let's know better here, and the people that are hearing this right now, please do something today, and and let's stop this. Let's do what we can, one animal, one person at a time, Mm -hmm. to help stop this. Thank you, Barbara, for that powerful statement. On one closing note, give me the names of the senior pets in your life, because you have some wonderful loves at home. Yes, I do, and I miss them. Can you tell me, tell I'm homesick today, I'm like a wreck. 
I, I think about the animal things than I do. Yes, I have. Um, when I'm gone, I'm gone for three and a half months on this shoot, and I never have gone anywhere without, you know, I can't take my animals, so I always make sure that I have a wonderful couple staying there so my animals all sleep in the bed. They've never not slept with humans. Mm-hmm. In fact, that's kind of how I judge people. Hopefully, they all let their animals sleep with them. I'd rather <laughs> sleep with, with animals mostly. But I have a, a 16-year-old deaf and almost completely blind Yorkie named Lucy. She uh-huh. has no teeth either, but she's doing great. great. Um, a 15-year-old chihuahua named Pepper. Aww. And then my dear Lola just passed away I in know. November. She ended up with a, a brain tumor and passed away. And I called the same rescue that I had gotten her from because I'm a foster failure. Mm-hmm. And uh, <laughs> and uh, got, adopted an 8-year-old little ram chubby chihuahua named Maggie. So that's oh. my family. Oh, I and, love uh, them. Yep, I know. So we'll have to talk again. Again, anybody who follows me on social media knows me and loves my dogs as well and has helped me through. When when you have seen your dogs, things go wrong, just as with us. So mm-hmm. there's extra medications and, you know, extra surgeries and extra. But, man, adopting a senior is so wonderful, not only for you, but for them. Absolutely. And I... I one of the, my things that I, my causes that you are so kind about to let me talk about, Robin, is, is how to really consider adopting a senior and not just a cute puppy. And we're going to have you seniors, back for that. People yeah, need to know this. Seniors that. need a home, and you're a great example yeah. of fostering, and being a foster failure with a senior dog is the best failure <laughs> ever, I think. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Barbara, I'm so glad you could join us today. This has been such a wonderful episode, enlightening, informative, hard to hear at times, but I tell you, it's a game changer for many of our listeners who now know about what animals face around the world. Wow, friends. You know, I think sometimes we forgot some of the horrors that are going on across the world that are impacting our favorite animals, like the terrible dog meat trade that Barbara discussed today. As a CEO of American Humane, I'm dedicated, just like Barbara, to stopping these horrors to stopping and ending the abuse of animals, and to really building a better humane world for all creatures. From one animal lover to another, thank you for joining us for this week's episode of Loving Animals. Remember this week and every week, I'm Loving Animals, and I know you are too. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.